From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and the siren of Omdur Maran. Like Tarzan's jungle, the tiny city of Omdur Mara was deep in equatorial Africa. But there the resemblance ended, for civilization had tarnished the splendor of nature. The city included a miserable collection of native huts, the wide sprawling and dirty official buildings, a crumbling jail, the sand breach palace of the Pasha, a few nondescript homes and cheap hotels, and Sudan's most infamous street. From the whitewashed minaret of a mosque, the muezzin summoned the faithful to prayer. But a lone rider, his Bedouin robes flying, disregarded the surah as he galloped up to the real heart of the city, the Café Bal Oriental, standing in solitary splendor at the foot of the street of thieves. You there! Take my horse! I should hold the reins, Effendi, but we must make ourselves past with palm ground. Why? It is time of evening prayer. Ibn al-Suman cares nothing for prayers. I have business in the Café Bal Oriental. Make fast my steed and have the door open for me. Will be as you say, master. Arms, mighty sheik. Give this lowly Arab a small bakshish. I have neither patience nor money for beggars. Out of my way. A thousand times, a thousand curses on you. You should not kick crippled beggar, Fendi. Am I to be taught manners by a Nubian slave? I meant no harm, master. I meant only it is bad luck. Ibn to... al-Suman makes his own luck. Have the door of the cafe open for me. At once, master. And please not tell my mistress I offend thee. The door, the door. Open the door of the cafe Bal Oriental for the great sheik, Ibn al-Suman. Ah, the music of the Orient and the perfume of rich incense. This is more like it. Have the barman pour a drink for me. At once, Effendi. It better be at once. I'm getting tired of being treated like an untouchable. I have to beg my way into this brocaded den, and once I am here, I... You are here, aren't you, Ibn? Jolar, I... I did not think you were in. But one always knows when you are present. I didn't mean to cause a fuss, but after all, I've crossed half the desert to see you. And it's harder to get in here than it is to rob a caravan of a hundred camels. Keep your voice down, my handsome one. Even inside my cafe, we do not advertise our means of making a livelihood. Sorry. If you would forego your drink, we could talk more freely in my quarters. You know I'd forsake a thousand drinks to be with you, golden one. Go ahead, Jolnar. I follow in the wake of your tiny jewel slippers. Did you bring gifts for me, Eben? <laughs> Come over to this table here, Jolnar. There, gold and necklaces and rings and brooches, fit even for such a queen as thou, Julnar. Hmm, they look as if they would bring a good price in the thieves' market. In the thieves' market? Are my gifts to you to be sold along with the offerings of your other suitors? Why not? Why not? Because I've risked my neck to bring these baubles for you to wear. Have you not promised to give your love to the man who brings you jewelry fit to grace your great golden beauty? And do you think these trinkets are worthy of my beauty? These trinkets on this table are worth a fortune. Oh, you did try, Ibn, and I'm grateful. But the man who wins me must bring me a jewel like, like the great star sapphire that rests in the forehead of the god of the Karmicus. You expect me to rob the idol of a jungle tribe thousands of miles from here? The man who wins my love must be willing to make an effort. There are others who would try. Darcy, the undersecretary of the French consulate. DeWitt, the Englishman, the American adventurer. Stop. You do not have to reel off the names of my rivals. I'll get the star sapphire of the Karmikis for you, Jules Nair, Even though it means facing the cannibals and the pygmies and the wild animals and the untamed white god who has bested so many raiders of the jungle. Tarzan? He has killed many. 
But he has not yet faced a man like Ibn al-Suman, who would stop at nothing to secure the key to his beloved's heart. The jewel will be yours, Julnar. We shall return in just a moment with a story of Tarzan and the Siren of Amdur Mara. Several weeks after Ibn al-Suman's vow to obtain the star sapphire for Julnar, Tarzan's jungle paradise was suddenly disrupted. Native villages were assaulted. Great herds of elephants stampeded. Sheeta the panther and Numa the lion ran in fright. All living things screamed in terror as the savages of the Karmiki tribe rampaged in the jungle. Their hearts and their spears of war turned against their neighbors. Tarzan braved death a dozen times before he managed to gain the camp of the warring Karmiki. Great Chief Nagako, I come because your arrows and your spears have caused terror in the jungle. This war must stop. Nagako, long time on a name of Tarzan. But this war, no business of Tarzan. Whose business is it? Your warriors have attacked the people of many different tribes. We search for him who has defiled our god. Oh, someone has damaged your moon idol? Great star sapphire of Moon Idol has been stolen. What? Temple guards strangled. Priests of Karmiki stabbed. Eye of Moon God torn from forehead. Now we kill every native in jungle. That way we know we kill right one. I understand your anger, mighty Nagago. But your desire to kill everyone so that you know you've had vengeance on him who is guilty does not speak well for the honor of your people. We have no honor until I of Moon God is back. Perhaps Tarzan can help you recover the sapphire. I know many secrets of the jungle taught to me by the apes who raised me, secrets not even known to the mighty people of Karmiki. I shall help the you Gako if... Nagako welcomes Tarzan as brother. He puts around your throat Karmiki necklace that bears feather of eagle, claw of tiger... Ivory of bull elephant. It is symbol of brotherhood. I shall wear it proudly. But you embarrass me, Nagako. I started to say I shall help you if you agree to stop the war until we find out who is guilty of the theft and the murders. Nagako, agree. Tell your warriors, and then take me to your temple. We will follow the trail from there, and death be to him who has robbed my brothers of the Karmiki. <laughs> This is the sacred room. Nadeo, and there our god with great eye gone. Until moon gods see, evil spirits possess our children. The priests who were killed, they met their death in this room? Nadeo, they die at entrance. Many signs of struggle with robbers. Nagako think maybe it was Waziri of Marwa tribe, or perhaps a Punya. Mm. Did your priests wear garments of silk? Silk? No. Only simple dress of animal skins. And yet there is a thread of silk caught in the rough timber of the door frame. Neither the Mawas nor the Punyas know anything of silk. Indeed, that is right. You say they died by the knife. Strange knife. Made only small wound. Look, in the wall back of the idol. Do you see that hole? Indeed. Your priests died from the bullets of the Tamangani's thunder stick. So... Outside the temple in the clay, I found the impression of a leather sole, yet there was no mark of a hard heel as worn by a European. And on that beam, there is the thread of silk. What Tarzan say true, but what it mean? The defiler of your temple and the thief who stole the star sapphire is an Arab. But no Arab ever learn about Jewel of Moon God. One Arab did, and we're going to find him. <laughs> And so began a long trek for Nagako, chieftain of the Karmiki, and for Tarzan, lord of the jungle. At times, the spoor of the fleeing Arab and his followers grew faint. But always there was a footprint in the clay, a man-broken branch of a tree, a discarded fragment of equipment, or a message about the enemy relayed on the talking drums of the jungle. And then suddenly, near an abandoned French outpost, the trail was lost. If only there was someone living in these old buildings now, they might be able to tell us something. Many footsteps here. Not tell which are Arabs. Well, some of them lead down to that siding of the Kasalu Railroad. But if the thief boarded a train, there's no telling where he may have gone. What we do? I don't know. Maybe if we get out of this broiling sun, we may be able to think better. This end building look best. 
That thatched roof has been on there for many years, but it does look in better condition than the others. Oh, let's go in. I guess it's been a long time since anyone ever lived in this old... Bonjour, monsieur. Bienvenue. We thought... Or the wind was against us. We, we could not tell... Entre vous, s'il vous plaît. We thought the French had long since deserted this outpost. Oh, monsieur is correct. But Henri Duval is a sentimentalist. For 20 years, I am attaché here. I come here as a young man. It is my first appointment. Although political changes send my countrymen away, I remain. I am a sentimentalist. Now, come in and have a seat. Santa. How do you exist here, Monsieur Duval? I own a bit. The engineer of the Castle Railroad bring me a gift of ammunition every Bastille day. And there are berries and fruit. I would gladly share my simple dinner with you. Oh, visitors twice within the same number of days. I am too lucky. You have visitor yesterday? The handsome Arab on his way home to the arms of his beloved. An Arab, eh? Did you happen to learn his name? Mary. Oui. He was even al suman a romantic cavalier with a romantic story. Well, what we would like to know it is It seemed that... the object of his affection has never given her heart to any man. And she has never worn any piece of jewelry. Oh, that's very interesting, but we Long would... ago, she has swear only to wear a jewel that can match her beauty. Someday, someone give her a jewel she like, and she will wear it. And he who has given her the token will be the chosen one. Now, even al suman return home with a great jewel. The jewel? You saw it? It was a star sapphire? Mais oui. It was the size of an eagle egg and as brilliant as la lune. As brilliant as the moon. I am moon god. Is that not a charming story? Henri Duval like a thrilling love story. He's a sentimentalist. In what direction was the Arab headed? Where was he going? But I have told you. To the home of his beloved. Yes, where? Where? He, he traveled east to the city of Omdurmara. <laughs> Incredible as it seems, Ibn al-Suman had been in Omdurmara but a few days when Tarzan and Nagako emerged from the jungle and made their way toward the center of the city. But once again, the path ahead was clouded with questions. Where in this maze of city dwellings lived the enemy they sought? They wandered down the tortuous street of thieves and passed the Café Bal Oriental as they pondered the question. <laughs> Would be dangerous to ask too many questions. If they find Nagako, his free man, might try to take him slave. Do not become separated from me, Nagako. If anyone should... Arms, mighty men of the jungle, give this lowly Arab a small bakshish. Uh, we are sorry, but we have no coin of your country. Perhaps that jungle necklace you wear. In the marketplace, it would bring the price of a bowl of millet meal and sour pap. A tribal necklace. It is of little intrinsic value, my friend, but it means much to me. Oh, wait, I just remembered. I have a few francs forced upon me by a, a sentimental Frenchman. They are yours. Here. Oh, a thousand blessings on the white jungle man. Would that this humble servant of Allah could do you service. Perhaps you can. Can we trust you not to make loose talk? My lips can be like those of the mighty Sphinx. Good. We seek one named Ibn al-Suman. Do you know him? You are friends of his? We enemies. He has other enemies. He is a man who kicks beggars who brings upon himself a thousand times a thousand curses. Ah, then you do know him. Can you lead us to where he lives? By Allah, I can. But if you are enemies, we had best wait until nightfall. Tomorrow night, perhaps. Why not tonight? Tonight he gives a great party. Today, in the bazaar, he received a sapphire necklace from a goldsmith who mounted the jewel for him. Yes? And tonight at the party, he presents the costly bauble to the woman of his heart. If you will lead us, we will attend this party. As Allah is my witness, I warn you, he uses the scimitar with cunning skill. His guards are legion. And he would as casually snuff out your life as another man would put out a candle. Yet, if it is your will to go tonight, by Allah, I shall lead you. We'll return in just a moment to our story of Tarzan. In the distance, the blue Nile shimmered like a ribbon of silk in the moonlight, and the whitewashed minaret of the mosque gleamed like a skeleton finger. Limping his way back to the street of thieves, a crippled beggar smiled, because perhaps tonight, Ibn al-Suman would reap the result of his curses. And outside the wall that surrounded the palatial palace of the sheik, 
Two men of the jungle crouched in the shadows. Why we wait, Tarzan? Why not fight way in? Take Sapphire, kill enemy. <laughs> I hope to live to return to the jungle. As the midnight hour approaches, the guards grow less wary. Even now, they're becoming dull from too much food and wine. Throw rope ladder on wall now? Yes. Try to throw it in the most shadowed place. Ah, good throw. Climb wall now? Yes, be careful of your footing, Nagako. Me, careful. Follow me now. Be very quiet now, Nagako. My guests, I have invited you to this party for a very special purpose. As many of you know, the beautiful Jules Mar has never deigned to wear any manner of jewelry. Yeah. Oh, but tonight, even Al Suman shall tempt Jules Mar with a prize beyond compare. I hope the fabled jewel is worthy of your speech, Evan. <laughs> Believe me, it is my Jules Mar, and when you see it, you will accept the jewel and me. Let's see it. Where is it? Behold, the star sapphire of Kariki. Oh, Evan, oh, it's magnificent. It's even watch out, Savage is leaping from the wall. Then. To thieves! At the men, they... No, you cannot take my sapphire. The black one has it. He's fleeing over the wall. He's escaped. Get the white one before he reaches the top. The guns, the guns. A mighty shot. His blood stains the top of the wall. We will comb the forest for the black one who has the jewel. The white one we will find dead on the other side of the wall. Hey, 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 Morning, Effendi. I tie up two steed for you. Be quick about it, Rehan. I must see your mistress at once. Mim Sahib Jurnar not in. She has gone to Bazaar. Then never mind tying my horse, Nubian. I shall return later. Effendi, did you catch Jewel Thief? No, but we will. I have twice 200 men encircling the city. He will not get far. But at least your bullets killed white men of jungle. I do not know. It was less than a minute until my men had reached the spot where he dropped. But the body was gone. Gone. Poor oh, Ibn al-Suman. He will be laughing stock of city. I will not be laughed at by you, slave. Guard your tongue or you will feel my scimitar. Ah, oh, there you are, Rehan. Did you not know I sent for you? I was just coming, Mem Sahib. May I be of service? You can tell me what mystery transpires here. Mystery? Last night you were in attendance when I went to the party in my honor. After the skirmish, the body of the handsome white thief we believed dead was missing. And so were you. I was confused by battle. I ran to woods. Stopping here at the cafe only long enough to steal bandages and medicine and food. Is that not true, Rehan? It's true, Mimsa. Unless you lead me to the place where you have hidden this tall white man, I will have you turned over to Ibn al-Suman and beaten. If you will come alone... I will lead you to his hiding place. You wake up, Tarzan. Oh. Oh, it is dark. You, you are Nagako? Me, Nagako. We in cave. Tarzan unconscious many hours. Yes, I remember. The bullet in my side. No try move. Bullet removed. Side bandage. But how did you get me to this cave? Where is it? Not far from Omdomara. Me got jewel. Then look back. Tarzan not there. <sighs> me turn around. Native dragging Tarzan toward woods. Nagako carry Tarzan to cave native knows. Then he goes away. Comes back with medicine, food, bandage. Yeah, he must be a brave man. Who is he? Name Rehan. He's traitor to Karmiki. He's a Karmiki? Long ago, he taken slave. He tell mistress and even al-Suman about Eye of Moon Idol. That's how Arab know about Jewel. But why did he tell? Shh, shh. Someone come. Who come? It's Rehan, great chieftain. Rehan and woman. Why you bring woman? I forced him to bring me. Woman forced you. You call self Karmiki. Speech and dress have changed. In heart, too. Real. I always thought you were from Nuba. You are a Karmiki, and this is the Karmiki chief? Me, chief of Karmiki. 
But him not Carmiki now. Great Chief Nagako, it's true I told about Jewel. And it's true also, I knew Alstaman would steal it. But it only so you and your men would follow him to Amdumara. I planned to help recover Jewel and return home to my people. It was my only way of escaping from slavery. I have helped you. Please take me back with you. Rehan calls death of temple guards and priests. Can I take you home? Please. I won't let you go and he won't take you, Rehan. Enough of this. Where is the wounded white man? In dark corner there. But you... And you are the fool who risked your life for a jewel. It was my life that I risked. I did not gamble on others to satisfy my vanity. You insolent savage. My wounded side keeps me from turning so that you may slap the other cheek. So you are the woman for whom men steal and brave death. No man has ever dared to talk to me that way. Perhaps no man has ever seen you in your true colors. Nowhere in the jungle is there an animal as cruel and as ruthless as you. Why, you... In the animal kingdom, the female cares for the young and tends the male when he is injured. And yet I suppose you think yourself superior to the hyenas and the apes. I've had to struggle all my life for what I've got. No one ever cared for me, and I've never cared for anyone. That is plain. Otherwise, you would not have put the price of a jewel on your love. I doubt that he who wins it will find your love worth the price. You speak bravely for one who lies helpless. I could give your hiding place away. And will you? No. I shall remain here and nurse you back to health. <laughs> Week after week, Julnar did nurse Tarzan, though their relationship was most strange. Neither Tarzan nor Nagako, who refused to return home without his white brother, trusted the siren of Amdur Mara. And although Julnar brought nourishing foods and medicines to the cave, she never smiled at the man who had spoken roughly to her that first day. It seemed as though her only purpose was to prove Tarzan's first estimate of her wrong. Rayhan, bring the jug to Tarzan's couch. <laughs> a couch made of rock. At least your pampering won't make me too soft. The jug, Minsad. Ah. Here, some rich broth. It will strengthen you. I have no appetite for invalid's food. You must gain strength. Even now, Ibn al-Suman watches me with, with suspicion. You must leave soon. No, another few days and oh, perhaps I can. The Arabs, Al-Suman and three of his men, they approach the cave. Ah, so, Julmar, after all this pretense, you did lead them to us. I swear I did not. They must have followed me. I'm sorry. Yes, that was unkind of me to suspect you. If, if we escape, will they wreak vengeance on you? I can manage Ibn. All right, then we must leave at once. Nagako, we must attack before they know what we're about. And then we must make for the jungle before more Arabs join them. Help me up. Tarzan, too weak to fight. I am too strong to lie here and be killed. And the eye of the moon god must be returned to Karmiki. Is so. Here, I help you up. Uh, my knife? Ah, here it is. Uh, take me with you, Nagako. Take me back to my people. They kill you because of priests and guards. Stay here. They come. We will not die without a struggle. There they are. At them in. Hey, uh, 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 I cannot look, Rehan. Tell me what happened. The Arabs are no more, Minsad. And Tarzan and the Gako head for edge of jungle. Gone. They would not take me back to my people. Minsad, you were a necklace of Kamiki. It was Tarzan's. In the rush, he forgot to take it with him. But you say... If you ever put on jewel or necklace... It would mean that I had accepted a gift and the love of a man. As those two disappear into the jungle, Rehan, we both lose something we love and can never have again.
return in just a moment with a word about our next story. It does not shine like gold, nor gleam like diamonds, but men have traveled the world looking for it. They have plunged into the bowels of the earth seeking it, and almost every time it is found, it brings war and suffering and death. For the first time, it is discovered in the heart of the jungle, and this time, too, it brings death and drama in the story Black Gold of Africa, which we relate in our next story. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced and directed by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs>